Hi, my name is Gary Testa, and I'm President and CEO of Engineer Fluids, and today we want to walk you through some of the lessons that we've learned in uh, working with a fully immersed server. We're going to show you uh, how we do it here at the lab in terms of removal, uh, the use of the hoist, uh, as well as what it takes to actually, today we're going to replace some memory. Um, and as I step through this process, I'm going to kind of point out some of the things that we've learned along the way. So one of the first things that uh, I always recommend just to stay clean is uh, we're going to use a set of nitro gloves. Now, because our product is biodegradable and non-toxic and non-corrosive, um, it's not going to hurt your hands, but I like to wear the gloves simply uh, to prevent having to wash your hands afterwards, and so it keeps things a little cleaner. Today, we've got a, a HP server. Uh, it is in a, uh, a clear plexiglass test unit that we use here at the lab, uh, and the coolant that we have in here today is EC100. So, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you the process that we use here at the lab in order to remove the server, then I'm going to replace the memory chips, uh, and then place it back in. So you can see that right now, we do have flow going through here. Uh, both of the servers that are in this test tank are on. And one of the very first things we're going to do, of course, is, is before we remove the server, because it's an immersed server, and because it has no fans in it, is we're going to disconnect the server. And we've already gone through a graceful shutdown process uh, earlier. So now what I'm going to do is disconnect the power on both power supplies. Then I'm going to disconnect the network connection as well from this particular unit. And you'll notice that I'm kind of placing them here off to the side. Uh, in our larger tank systems, there's often cable management, which you would use to move it around. But this is just to keep it out of the way. So the next thing, now that I've, did, I've shut off the server, now I'm going to actually raise the server. So in order to do that, we always recommend the use of a hoist. This is uh, significantly easier than reaching in and trying to manhandle the server, particularly because these particular types of one-use servers are very long. So the hoist is quite simple. We have an overhead gantry uh, with a lightweight crane, and typically we like to use just a simple lift hoist like this, uh, and then we use some simple loops. And I'll show you how we attach the loops to the server uh, as we bring it up. So I'm going to bring this server here up, and you can see we're going to go ahead and lift this straight up. And I'm going to show you, um, all of the uh, servers have an ear here. So you can do a lot of complicated things. We've seen people that have uh, put brackets on the back. We've seen people do, what our, our favorite is, is that we make these lifting arms. They're slightly narrower than the server. And because of that, the tension on these two wire loops basically is pinched together by the weight of the server. So it makes it very easy, very easy to disconnect. You just reach down and see, to reconnect. So this way, when you have to move things around, uh, it's very simple. So now I'm going to bring the server the rest of the way up. Now, we get a lot of discussion about where and how you should do maintenance. Our personal preference here at Engineer Fluids is to actually leave the server in this position when you're doing maintenance. And the reason is, is that you have full access to everything. Um, you don't need to drain uh, or dry the server because there's no reason if you're doing any kind of standard maintenance, any type of connections can be done without having to remove any of the fluid. The only time you would have to remove the fluid is if you were going to say return this server to the manufacturer, in which case you could actually remove it in its entirety. And in a future video, we'll show you how to use our dielectric solvent, our DS100, to clean all of the fluid off. So you'll see that just by having the, the server uh, above the tank, the fluid drips back into the tank. We want to do that. We want the, as much of the coolant to remain in the tank. You'll notice that on the tank design, you can see that the level here has dropped considerably. That's really important in tank design to make sure that you have enough displacement area so that as we reinsert this server, we don't overfill the tank. And you can see that the tank is continuing to operate just fine because we do have enough extra fluid. So one of the things I want to show you is one of the things that we did to prep this server prior to immersion is to actually fix the and clean the, di the dielectric grease, the thermal grease that is typically placed on the back of this heat spreader. 
There's our CPU. You can see how easy it was to remove the heat spreader. And what we've done is we've placed a small piece of indium here on the back of this. We do this because it helps to spread the heat from the processor uh, to the heat spreader. Once you've done that, we've cleaned off the thermal grease that was here originally. Uh, we do that to prevent contamination into our. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall this. And you can see why having the uh, server up at this eye level makes things very simple. I can, uh, I can quickly put this back on. And we've done that, of course, to both CPUs. Now, in this case, I want to show you how we're going to install memory. And I have a couple of memory chips. Uh, and basically, again, the advantage here is that I don't need to clean uh, any of the components before installing them, meaning that I don't need to remove the coolant. So in this case, I want to make sure that I have my alignment key in the right location to make sure that we're properly aligned. And you can see that. And then all I'm going to do is, of course, push you can hear the positive locking there of the memory, and that's it. There's no need to remove the coolant. The coolant does not act as a barrier. It does not prevent the electrical connection uh, to any of these high-speed memory chips. And so then we'll do the same thing, of course, with this one. Again, making sure that we pay particular attention to the direction and the placement of the memory. So we slide this right in uh, to the slot. We push down. We have nice positive locking. And there it is. Uh, we can do the same if we were going to replace the disk drives. In this case, this server has solid state drives. We don't put any spinning disks into the fluid. The fluid actually wouldn't have hurt the disk, but because they're not designed to operate uh, in a fluid environment, you get a bunch of drive errors that occur because the disk starts to spin slower. So in order to replace those, we would simply raise the server up a little more, and then we would have access to the front of the server. After you've completed your maintenance, for instance, let's say that you were going to work on the power supplies, you would have to bring the server back into the tank, position the tank, and we would bring it down. At this level, you can see that I have full access to any of the power supplies that may need to be replaced. So we can access this. One of the questions we often get is, what about the fan on the power supply? Well, in this case, we've not removed these fans. We have removed the fans on the server itself, but we've not removed the fan on these power supplies. For this particular brand of HP server, if I were to remove this, the power supply would shut down. In this case, the fans will operate in the fluid, they'll operate indefinitely, and there's no issue with that. So in this case, if I've done my, my maintenance check or replacement, I can simply reconnect this and get some nice positive locking as I push it back down. I've finished doing the replacement of the memory, and as you can see, you can see that the displacement level of the, of the fluid has risen as I put this back in. And again, that's very important. Because of the design of this tank, the level is self-regulating, meaning, meaning that as I drop this server deeper into the tank, it will overflow but simply fill up the recovery channel, as shown here. So now I'm going to bring this server down, and this next part is very important. Okay? You want to make sure before reconnecting the power on the server is that you want to make sure that these fans are under the surface of the fluid. If you do not do that, they'll spray fluid and coolant everywhere, and you want to make sure that that doesn't happen. You spend a lot of money on your coolant, and we want to make sure that we keep it in the tank. Then again, I just do this in reverse. I can come over. You know, we're going to go ahead and, and reconnect the power. You'll notice that I uh, can do this while the other server is operating in the background here. Uh, there is no need to worry about any kind of electrical shock because uh, clearly the dielectric strength of the EC100 is over 60,000 volts, so we don't have any issue with that. Connection of the network connections are very simple. We simply place those in place, and then we're going to go ahead and re bring the server back down into its operating position. You can see the fans are operating. We know that the fans on the power supply are thick. Once it's in place, we simply come in here. We're going to remove our loops onto our lifting mechanism. Very simple. You'll notice that it's, there's no connections or anything. And then, obviously, we'll bring this up and out of the way. 
That shows you how simple it is to do maintenance. Again, one of our favorite things about this is that by bringing that server up to the full position, it's easy to access, it's easy to do maintenance. The only time I need to actually remove the server from its entire environment is if I were going to do some other type of uh, more intrusive replacement or if I needed to send it out. So I want to thank you again for uh, spending some time with us here in the Engineered Fluids Lab. Uh, please keep those questions coming. We'd like to uh, answer as many and do as many of these videos as we can. So again, thank you very much and uh, we'll see you next time. Immersion cooling.